Improving security is easier when we understand the nature of our problems. Security has multiple levels of problems. The most intractable are problems that are fundamental to reality. For example, security is intangible. We cannot prove that it exists. We hope it does. We can never know the future. We can never know all attacks. We can never defend against all attacks. We can, we can show that something is insecure by demonstrating a likely effective attack. We can usually tell if something is more or less likely to be successfully attacked in the near future. We all want to be able to say that something is secure. But we can't say that without, try, without lying to ourselves and others. The best we can usually do is work towards more secure alternatives. Another reality is security is driven by problems. We need security because we have problems. So our, our first, our most basic security assumption is problems require change. And then that quickly leads us to security needs problems to keep our jobs and security changes stuff to keep our jobs. But changing is not the same as improving security. The best we can usually do is try to keep busy with changes that yield cost-effective improvements. Intractable security problems also arise when incentives oppose security. Mismatched incentives are a fertile breeding ground for security issues. For example, today our IT industry has great ability to improve security, but we usually lack matching motivation. IT organizations disclaim responsibility for our security failures. The software groups say that they will never be responsible for anything ever. <laughs> The rest of us say that we are not responsible because we were compliant with the PCI or HIPAA or FERPA or because we followed best practices. We did our best. <laughs> Finally, we also heavily reward IT for shipping insecure product. These intractable problems are the primary cause of decreasing internet security. Every year there's more attack. Attack tends to become more successful. Attack tends to cause more damage. Every year it's harder to secure and defend our internet connected computers. These intractable problems strongly affect the pen test industry. To start, pen tests cannot measure security. <laughs> they are good at demonstrating the lack of security. The primary deliverable of the pen test industry is measurements of insecurity. Good pen test teams sell precisely measured and carefully ranked insecurity. Great pen test teams sell precisely measured, carefully ranked, and relevant insecurity. Unfortunately, no matter how carefully you measure it, no matter how carefully you label it and rank it, most organizations do not want to buy insecurity. In the early days of IT, penetration testing was a secret perversion that was practiced by masochists and security addicts. Then pen testing got a marketing makeover. Today, the pen test industry sells two hugely successful products. They sell regulatory compliance, that is, pen testers will carefully measure your insecurity and, and state if you have enough insecurity to be compliant with a regulatory regime. 
course, regulatory compliance isn't the same as reducing su successful attack. It might help. It might reduce successful attack. It usually does. But it might not. The second huge product of the pen test industry is best practices. That is, pen testers will state if you have as much insecurity as the next guy. Again, best practices may not reduce successful attack. They might help. Sometimes they do, usually they do, but sometimes they don't. Pen tests are usually a business success if they help the organization proclaim regulatory compliance or best practices. Of course, you can still try to use pen tests to reduce successful attack, but that usually takes a lot more work.